In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how you can use something like make.com to hook up to your Bolt app and instantly have access to a workflow or an agent in seconds. I'm gonna walk you through a draft I have of a product requirement document generator that will allow us to enter a series of different fields, hook it up to AI, in this case, make.com, and send a request to make.com and come back with an AI generated summary of exactly what we need to do in order to build the product of our dreams. Let's dive right in. All right, so this is a draft of what I have so far with just one singular prompt. We have this PRD generator, which again, PRD stands for Product Requirements Document. And then we have a series of fields here that you can fill out in order to draft your idea and brainstorm. So we have the product name that you come up with, the timeline and constraints, your problem statement, your target market and user personas, your business objectives. And if we keep going, we have things like key features and capabilities, success metrics, competitive context, and additional constraints. So it's very comprehensive, but if we fill this out with test data, you'll see that it goes nowhere. And the goal of this tutorial is to walk you through how you can send this somewhere else like make.com and have it quickly send the information to an AI or a series of AI steps to come back with a very detailed response. Now, before we hop into make.com, I'll walk you through the general structure of the prompt I sent just to give you some context. So I said, create a comprehensive product requirements document generator that transforms a high level product roadmap idea into a detailed actionable PRD. The generator should take roadmap inputs and expand them into full PRD following industry best practices and proven templates. And then we have some criteria here in terms of the prompt. So the prompt should accept various formats of roadmap information like brief product concepts or ideas, high level strategy objectives, market opportunities or customer problems, competitive requirements or business goals, etc. Then we have the general structure of what we should collect. And if you think that I wrote this prompt myself, you are sadly mistaken. So if we hop into ChatGPT as an example, you could do a quick search to give it context on what Bolt.new is. So I can say, go do some quick research on what Bolt.new is, its capabilities, and the best practices for prompting it. And then I can send that over. It'll go do a very quick, comprehensive web search. And then you can see right there, it's able to see exactly what it is. It's already searched in the time that I sent this 10 to 15 different sources. And I want to have this in the chat as context because all I have to do then is say, okay, act as a prompt engineer. And I want you to output a prompt in Markdown in a code block that I can easily copy paste into Bolt, optimize for Bolt that will help me build a product requirement document generator. And the idea is I sent over something along these lines and then it was able to quickly, like you see here, generate a prompt with the key features, the display, export options, design. And I was able to take this and change and basically swap out whatever I wanted. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into make.com and one, walk you through what it is if you're not familiar and two, show you how we can hook it up to something like Bolt to avoid using something like Superbase or custom code. So make.com is a workflow automation tool that's very similar to other products out there like Zapier, N8N, Pipedream, and anything you can imagine in that workflow space. And the idea is in make.com that you can click this purple button right here and get access to all kinds of automations, tools, and backends. So if you wanted to send something to a service like Facebook, you'd be able to see all the different automations they have for Messenger, Facebook, Facebook pages, etc. And the cool thing is, if you want to be able to draft an automation, you could even use AI, an AI chat here, to be able to ask for what automation you want to build, and it will help you actually draft what the automation could look like. Now, in our case, we're going to use a very dead simple operation just to show you how this could work. So when it comes to these workflow automation tools, whether it's N8N or Zapier, or in this case, make.com, you usually have some form of ear that we call the webhook. And when we receive information from Bolt, that ear is basically listening for that information. Once we have that, we can then execute the rest of the workflow, and most importantly, send the response of that workflow back to Bolt. So in our case, we're gonna start off with a webhook. We'll click on custom webhook right here. And then we'll create a brand new custom webhook and we'll call it my bolt here. We'll click on that. We'll click on save. And now you'll see that we have this little loading button and some URL. This URL is the URL that we're going to have to tell bolt to send the information we fill out in the form 
so that make.com can understand the structure of the data that it should be looking for. Once it has that, we can use that data and use it in a workflow to be able to build out the entire workflow end to end, and most importantly, send it back to the program we create. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy the address to my clipboard and in bold, I'm gonna go here and say the following. So I wanna be able to fill out the form and ideally when I click on submit, I wanna send all that information to a webhook in make.com so that I can basically automate a part of the process, send it to a few AI steps, and more importantly, respond with a response. So not only do I want you to send that data to the URL that I give you down below, but also keep in mind that there will be some form of response that you should be listening for to be able to show and display properly in our app. So in this case, we'll send that over. I'll say, this is the webhook URL. We'll paste this right here, okay? And what it should do behind the scenes is there should be no differences on screen. It should just make some differences in the back end to be ready to send this information elsewhere. And after just two minutes, we get a response here that says it's made some changes on the back end. It's even preparing for what kind of data it's going to send to this webhook. So if we open this up in a brand new screen, then we go to continue project. It should show the latest version of the app. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put a bunch of test data here, just to be able to send the request. So we just put the word test everywhere. And the goal is, ideally, when I click on this button, what should happen is this spinning wheel should stop spinning, and we should get a notification that says, successfully determined. And what that will mean in plain English, assuming it works on the first try, is that it understands exactly what data is coming to make.com. So let's click on this and fingers crossed. Let's see, it says unexpected token. Let's see what we get here. So we have some issue on the front end, but it looks like we have successfully determined the information. And what we can do is we can click on save. We'll click on run again, just in case. And then I'm going to double check whether or not that worked. So let me click on generate again. And let me see, did we get some form of information? So it says here we have a bundle and it has this little plus icon. I wanna click on this and you can see, yes, we got all the responses from the user interface and it's all happens to be test. So we should be good to go on that side. Now, back in bold, it should have detected some form of error, but what I can do is I can screenshot this, okay? And then copy paste it. And I'll say, it seems like the webhook response is sending correctly to make.com, so good job. I just noticed this weird bug pop up when I clicked on submit. Can you please resolve? Now, if it seems to be more of a sticky issue, what I will do is go into something like chat mode, go back and forth in discussion mode to kind of flesh it out and have it reflect and ruminate on what the path forward might be. But I have a feeling this might be a very minor error. So I'm just gonna wait for it to complete and we'll go from there. Okay, so it updated. So I'm gonna click on run once again, right here. So we were listening for the information. I'll click on generate PRD. It looks like accepted, but no PRD was returned yet. Basically, it's waiting for a response that we haven't even created yet. And it already basically tells me that it's probably waiting for an instant response, whereas it should wait at least 60 to 80 seconds, depending on how long this will take. Going back into make.com, what we'll do now is actually build out our very, very miniature workflow. We're all gonna do is send all of these inputs into AI to come back with some form of response. So you can use all kinds of providers. You can use OpenAI, you can use Claude, you can use Gemini. In this case, I'm just gonna use OpenAI for familiarity reasons. You can select the create completion icon right here. And then when that pops up, it should ask you what model you'd like to choose. Now I'll use something on the cheaper side, like 4.1 mini, or let's do nano, okay? and then we'll be able to enter a prompt. And all we have to do is just map all the fields. So I'm just gonna say user prompt. And then this is the text content that gets sent over to this program. So I'll just say, ta taking all of the product ideas into account below, create a product requirement document in Markdown. Now I'm gonna say markdown because I wanna be able to show bolds and italics on screen. So it helps us actually create a type of response. Now I'll, just, I'll put below to make it really clear for it what each one represents. So I'm gonna fill this all out and we'll come back. 
So it only took a minute or so, and all I had to do was just, I wrote the word product name, product statement, etc., and I just plugged and played, and what you can do is just literally drag and drop the variable name from the right-hand side, just so that we have a label for every piece of data we're receiving. Once we click on save, we now have an open AI step. And what we can do is actually rename it for clarity. So we can click on rename right here and I'll say something like PRD generator and then click on save. And then to send this response back to Bolt, we have to be able to not just have an ear, but also have some form of boomerang that sends it back to the UI. So if we go into webhooks, we can click on webhook response and we should say that the body of the response should be the result of this specific output. Now what we'll do is we'll just run this again just to generate the asset from GPT or OpenAI in this case and then draft sending it to this webhook response. So what we'll do is I'll go back to the form, I'll score the bottom, I will click on generate comprehensive PRD. You'll see now it's waiting and it's going to send this request. This will error out right here for a reason because we don't have anything defined in the body. But now that we've ran the GPT step, we have access to the result. So if we go on to the choices section, click here, and then click on messages right there, we should be able to see this section called content. This is the content, which in this case is the product requirements document in Markdown. I will take this, drag and drop it right here, and this is the response. So if we run this again, we should be able to ideally have a response generated. Now, whether or not it will show up on Bolt is a second story. So we'll click on run once. I'll go back to the PRD generator. I'll click on generate and let's see the entire process. It should be pretty quick because we have only one step. Once the step is done, it should send it to the webhook response, which ideally should display in Bolt, but let's see. Okay, so it says invalid JSON response from webhook. Okay, so to resolve this, I'm gonna go back into make. I'll go to our last step here on the speech bubble, and I'm gonna click on this icon and click on download input bundles. So we'll copy this right here. We'll go back into Bolt and I'll basically explain what's happening. Okay, it seems like we're successfully sending the webhook data correctly. We're waiting for a small period of time, but we are receiving an error that the program is not expecting the structure of the data that actually gets sent back from make.com. So we have to accommodate for that really quickly. I'm just adding that urgency right there. So here is, here is the structure of the data. And then what I'll do is it'll go to here. I'll screenshot the error that's happening in the app as well. So we have a full feedback loop or extra stimuli for the Bolt agent. We'll send it here and we'll see what happens. So apparently the issues should be resolved. So let's open this up again. We'll click on continue project and I'll enter test everywhere and then we'll submit it. So we'll click on run once again and then we'll go back to here. Click on generate comprehensive PRD. So far so good, it looks good. And it seems like we're still getting some form of invalid JSON response. So I'll just screenshot this and we'll come back once this is resolved. And before we actually do that, I just wanna show you one more thing that I like to send to Bolt sometimes. If you go to developer tools, you can sometimes get richer errors than you would otherwise. So I can just click on copy, copy console, and I'll say, we're still getting errors. Here's the console log as well, because there could be some more hints for Bolt as to what might be happening that it can resolve through there. Okay, and after a few trials and errors, all we did was we encountered the same issue. It suggested that there were two things wrong, which was correct. I click on try to fix, and then I pasted the console one more time, and now we get a really pretty report just like this that it basically auto parses the markdown. And the issue was that we had a series of hashtags and asterisks on purpose because it was markdown, but it was not able to what's called parse it, meaning kind of break it apart. So now it's able to break it apart properly. And what we can do is we can actually name this automation now, Bolt PRD Generator. And now instead of continuing to click on run once every single time to test this out, we can click on set this to basically every single time it detects data, it should listen out for this data. I'll click on save. And now if we just click out of here, click save changes without me clicking the same thing. If we go back into the PRD generator, 
and let's go back to input. And now let's actually try something proper. I'll put some proper values here and submit it, and we'll see what happens. So I just entered a product here that's called product name not bolt, and then the timeline is five months. Problem statement, I wanna build an app that's like bolt.new that designs other apps, but not bolt. It creates designs in a very funky style. Now the rest of this is a bit more gibberish, but if we click on generate PRD, you'll see now it is running because it's listening for this data on autopilot. And once it's done running, you'll see when we go back, we should have a beautiful breakdown right here. And where we could continue to improve on is if we go back to functional requirements, you'll see that we still have some hashtags here. So it's not 100% perfectly generating the markdown parse. So we could just add, give that as context. And I could screenshot this, give it back to Bolt. But in general, we now have a way to build on this workflow. It doesn't have to be this lean. We could continue adding steps in between this and this, and then keep expanding it. But now Bolt already knows what to listen for. The only change we might wanna make is if you continue extending the complexity of this workflow, it maybe takes now four minutes to get a response. You just wanna make sure that you update Bolt and tell it, hey, Wait for up to five minutes for a response because now we have a more complicated workflow and the data might have changed. So as you iterate through this, the trick of showing what the output bundle is, which is basically the output data from the node in combination with the console will give you a solid combination to give you the stimuli or give Bolt the stimuli it needs to fix the errors over a few tries.